There you go, over to you, Martin. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, so, yeah. Okay, my name is Martin Moran, and uh, I'll be talking about uh, today. I'll be talking about uh, building an accessibility recommendation engine for blind and partially sighted students. How can I go? Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, our motivation is to figure out what kind of materials are usable, are accessible for students that are blind and partially blind. And on the first glance, one could argue that, of course, it's relatively straight, straightforward, straightforward thing. You just check if the materials for blind students are accessible with screen readers and braille readers and stuff like that. But it turns out that there are great differences between learning styles of students that have vision connect, vision associated disabilities, right? You have screen and braille users, meaning uh, uh, partially partially sighted and blind students, but then you also have different skill levels uh, between those students. Some students grew up with computers, and some students have completely are um, are not familiar with the computers. But then you also have different learning methodologies, different learning techniques within the same accessibility group. For instance, some blind students rely more heavily on the braille uh, the braille reader, while some students rely more heavily on the screen reader. So our goal is relatively simple. We want to be able to create a machine learning model to model the preferences of the students and then use that model to recommend materials that will actually be usable for those students. OK, uh, so in the presentation, I'll briefly talk about the uh, machine learning algorithm that is behind the recommendations uh, recommendation service for blind students. And secondly, I will also present the results of the first pilot study uh, and uh, the recommendation web service itself. Uh, OK, so the starting point to even uh, start uh, talking about uh, recommending materials to blind and partially sighted students is how we're going to describe them. And as a starting point, we started with uh, the ISO accessibility standards, three relevant uh, uh, topics that are perception, operability, and understandability. But of course, uh, our machine le learning model is flexible enough to make alteration to that descriptions uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if need be, add new attributes and new descriptions to the materials. Uh, okay, so uh, because, and I will, I will briefly talk about the machine learning algorithm that is behind it, right? Uh, because we are working in educational setting, it's really important for us that we have a transparent algorithm behind it. We want to be able, if the students, if the teacher asks us, why is certain students getting some recommendations? We want to be able to answer that questions. Or for instance, if a machine learning researcher asks us how the algorithm behaves, uh, uh, how the uh, algorithm behaves precisely, we want to be able to answer that question. So uh, in a nutshell, we are learning the preferences for materials and the preferences are modeled as preferences for materials attributes. And the main idea is really simple. We want to model interaction with the materials as either successful, uh, the material is accessible to the student, or unsuccessful, material is not accessible to, to the student. Uh, and of course, if some of you, uh, I, uh, sorry, I, I will address the things from chat uh, afterwards. Um, if some of you have the background in statistics or even machine learning, you would say that this sounds really similar to logistic regression. And in a sense, it really is. But the difference here is that we are not modeling preferences as a scalar values, meaning numbers. They're actually modeling preferences as a Gaussian variables, as random variables drawn from a Gaussian distribution. Or in other words, we are modeling preferences in fact as a functions that we are then trying to, uh, to fit. And why we're even bothering to do that, right? The students that, uh, the blind and partially blind students use the computers very slowly. So in order to uh, build a reliable model, in order to build a sensible model, we have to be able to learn really fast. So everything that we do uh, is done so that we can achieve really good results on very small data sets. And in fact, we are achieving state-of-the-art results depending on the data sets by a big margin uh, on very small data sets. Okay, so what are the outputs of the uh, of the algorithm? 
First, on the level of individual student, it is whether to engage the prediction, right? If the material will be usable to the student or not. Then this prediction is used to rank the materials. Uh, the materials are ranked higher if we estimate, if we predict that they will be more usable to the students. And then we also give uh, additional information to the student's teacher, which is on the level of individual students, presentation of preferences together with uncertainties. This is important because uh, you can see that on the, on the right hand side, on the bottom, uh, we can plot the preferences as Gaussian variables, right? And that even if you don't have the background from statistics, you can kind of intuitively understand that the flatter plot means that we are more certain about our, prefer about our estimate. Whereas uh, the, more, uh, the, the plot that is closer to peak means that we are really certain about our estimate of the parameter. So in other words, we, are, we try to be as fair as possible when we are communicating uh, the parameters of the model to the teachers. If the, we are not certain about uh, the, uh, the learned parameters of our model, we try to be fair and communicate that to the teachers clearly. The second thing is we can also try to plot and observe different classes that might occur inside, uh, inside the classroom, which should, uh, given enough data, corresponds to different uh, learning preferences, different learning styles that, uh, um, that uh, appear within the classroom. Okay, so, uh, and of course, the, the, the algorithm developed for this is not, uh, was not made in a vacuum. It's related to the TrueLearn, which is used to deploy the Gone project, uh, where it is used to model and predict uh, interest and skill levels in relation to uh, educational materials. And of course, the uh, whole project of recommending, uh, recommending materials to blind students is part of the X5 GOM project, which is a European project that tries to create machine learning tools to uh, empower the students to access open educational materials. Uh, then the, 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 the mathematics behind the model is inspired by uh, Microsoft's Strusky algorithm. That's, this is where the basic idea, this is from where the basic idea uh, about updating the Gaussian variables uh, takes, uh, takes its inspiration. Uh, okay, so uh, oh, I skip one slide. Okay, uh, we unfortunately don't have enough data to um, we unfortunately don't have enough data to conduct to really assess the quality of the algorithm on the specific task of recommendation for the blind student. But we do have we, we do have the unique opportunity to assess it on a similar similar problem, right? I mentioned before that our main task is to be to achieve really good performance on very small data sets. In other words, we want to be learn we want to be able to learn really fast. So uh, what we are trying to do with the same algorithm is just to explain why supercomputers break down. And of course, as you might imagine, uh, supercomputers breaking down in extremely rare events. So uh, if you want to explain uh, the supercomputer downtime, you have very small data sets. And there we achieve uh, state-of-the-art results that are, uh, uh, that are significantly, significantly better than any other available approach. We also test that this is in classification, this is in classification prediction task. The second one is from Slovenian educational repository called Eujbeniki. There we were testing the ranking capability of the algorithm. And there we actually achieved slightly below state of the art results compared to uh, collaborative filtering and variations on the team. But unlike collaborative filtering, we are offering explainability of the algorithm. And the second part, which is also important for us, if you know, we are not exactly Amazon and we want to create uh, uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable solutions that will be able to run uh, even uh, uh, in the long term, even uh, when the uh, uh, funds from European projects run out. We, we are computationally really effective. We offer uh, better scalability than state-of-the-art approaches, which means that it is computationally significantly cheaper to run this recommendation service even for the large amounts of students. Okay, uh, now I'll briefly talk about a recommendation engine as web service and the results of the pilot study we conducted on Slovenian blind and 
partially blind uh, high school students. So the web service was developed by Greg, was co-developed with me and Gregor Junich from uh, JSI's Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. And it consists of two parts, recommendation engine for blind students and management port for teachers. Uh, what is what I would like to highlight here is that we envisioned the recommendation engine, this recommendation service, as a very much helping tool for teachers. Uh, we are not really focusing on students being able to learn themselves. We want to be able to create a tool for online learning. Uh, of course, for online learning, but online learning in a context in the context of uh, students working with their teachers. So we want to be able to, of course, provide recommendations of re relevant materials to the students, but we also want to give the teachers opportunity not only to select which are the relevant materials for their classroom, but also to get additional information about their students, how they're doing, and uh, if the methods they're suggesting are suitable for them. Okay, so uh, this is the front end as the students see it. It's, a, it's by design really simple so that it is accessible to blind and partially blind students. The students log into a certain classroom and then the, the classroom recommends the uh, materials that are uh, planned to be relevant for them to the top and that is, uh, and, and that is the main functionality, right? And of course, the materials inside the classroom are pre-screened uh, pre-selected by the teachers. Uh, and then for the teachers, we have uh, the management platform where they can add materials, create classrooms, which classrooms are meant as a uh, mini courses, for instance, I don't know, introduction course on climate change and so on. So they create classrooms and then through that they can manage the, uh, the uh, both the um, progress of their students, but also the learned parameters from the models in regards to their students. Uh, okay, so I will talk about the students, the the, the actual platform of the of the uh, for the teachers, while I talk about the results from the pilot study. We're conducting a pilot study on Slovenian blind, partially blind, uh, uh, blind and partially sighted high school uh, uh, high school students, and we wanted to first evaluate if our main assumptions about uh, why we do this service even make sense, right? First of all, we were interested if there are, in fact, differences between different students in, in, the, access, uh, in the way they access materials and in the way which materials are, in fact, accessible to them. So uh, let's go to, and we were testing, which we created just the first pilot study, which was with four blind students and two partially blind students. So, um, uh, the first of all is, uh, I was talking about that um, clustering presentation that uh, um, our, um, our platform uh, allows, and here we can see that uh, the platform uh, uh, detects no clusters. That was partially by design, because we really wanted to create for a pilot study students that are as different as possible, meaning that we could screen for usability uh, as wide uh, as wide spectrum as possible. So it was by design that we included students that use different learning methodologies that have different skill levels that belong to different age groups uh, to uh, to use our system. So uh, uh, let's go to the results. I, I'll just I mean I could also uh, uh, do the the live um, demo of the platform. I, I mean I can I mean I mean I'm running out of time, so I'll just show it in PowerPoint. Right, um, so this is, or I can, I can do, can I do screen share? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it works. So, uh, hopefully you can see me, right? Yeah. Uh, here, we can first look at the first partially blind student. Right, and we can see that for her, uh, only one area was unusable. Uh, and we can see that for her, all three topics, meaning perception, understandability, and operability, are somewhat equally important. And then on the, uh, uh, on the summary page, we can see that our estimates for uh, understandability and operability, we have far more certainty in that as we have to the estimate about, uh, uh, about the, the, her preferred perception. Um, if we go to 
uh, if we go to another blind student, a partially sighted student, for instance, pardon, we can see that for him, understandability is far more important than perception and operability, right? So we can see that there are some sort of difference in, uh, in what is important for different students. And then, okay, I can stop sharing now. Uh, can I get my slides back again? That's not me. Uh, yeah, uh, that's me. Thanks. I can go to the correct slide. Um, okay. Uh, so. Uh, I'll go to the, to to, uh, to 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 conclusions uh, now. Uh, so to sum up, right? Oh, we have one more partially blind, and this is a blind student, right? And interestingly, for her, the most important attributes are the ones regarding and describing uh, perception-related attributes that describe the certain educational materials, right? And interestingly, we have the least certainty about the estimate of her perception preferences we can see that here um okay so the first uh, the encouraging encouraging results from the pilot studies were for the study were that one size fits all approach is not in fact suitable for all students so it makes sense to create a system like that the other thing that we did so the pilot study was done in person we were actually talking with uh, the students as well as recording their uh, interaction with the system uh, it, that gender really exciting about the idea of having a utility that will filter materials and recommend the materials that they will be actually able to access, right? But they, of course, are excited about having this uh, service integrate with other services and, of course, to have added to have um, more materials added later on. What is also what we are also excited about is the possibility to expose. I mean, our recommend recommender service is built so that it can be exposed to be integrated with other services. Of course, because of our project, we are mainly focusing on recommending educational resources. But it doesn't mean that we can't expose our recommender service to also to other platforms, for instance, the educational platform, which would get from us the recommendation for a specific student, what are the most uh, accessible uh, materials for them for, uh, from that uh, educational, uh, from that entertainment platform, whereas we would in return get information uh, about, the, the, about that student, with which we could use, which we could use to update our model. So that means that we will be able to uh, update and uh, get better and more tailored, tailored, um, um, uh, tailored predictions. Uh, okay, just yeah, uh, just uh, just a second. Uh, I'll, I'm finishing anyway, so I'll have time for questions then. And, and so of course, other thing is uh, that out of the area of future work that we really want to explore is, as I mentioned before, the way we described the, the way we describe materials that we then add to the system, right? We want to be able to explore the uh, possibility for automatic material annotation, and uh, we want to explore what is the most uh, sensible way to describe materials. Okay, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, can I get the question in? Uh, uh -huh, yeah, um, okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Oh. So I think there was one question there, Martin, for you, which was how are you handling consent to gather data from minors and people with disabilities? And are you uh, able yeah. to of the algorithm to prevent bias and discrimination? Uh, right, uh, that's a really good question. We have, uh, uh, I mean, our, our pilot study and every study that we do is was first uh, was first approved by the ministry and then we are actually requiring consent both from the student if they are the minor and from the from their parents and then we of course have the contact that we, where we can delete all their data from the system and that's it uh, also how we are uh, about the addressing bias right uh, um, 
what what we're really proud about of this uh, from, uh, about this algorithm are two things, right? First of all, is that every model that we create is personalized. So that means that is not that the possibility of being influenced by some sort of biased data is minimal, right? And the second one is that we are able to expose, uh, of course, if the uh, to expose either to the students or to the teacher all the parameters and all the interactions, all the all the steps the algorithm took in making the in making the model that is tailored to that student. So these two factors, these two factors, I believe, are the reasons why the possibility of creating uh, a biased model are minimal. If you compare that to the state-of-the-art approach for recommending services, right, uh, the stuff that Amazon uses, which is collaborative filtering or some variant in that form, there, because it's a black box model, you have no way to know why certain, for instance, when you go to Amazon and you get uh, customers that are similar to you also bought, there you have no way of knowing how that model was uh, how that model was trained and why you get these sort of recommendations and of course if that is uh, if that is about uh, what sort of thing you will buy on Amazon that is fine but it's not fine if we are if you have some sort of biased recommendations when it comes to educational materials but again we are uh, sorry can we, uh uh can uh -huh. Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, question sorry, or? sorry, Martin. Uh, I'm afraid that's yes. all we got time for. Um, okay. Uh, but but um, I'm sure people can pick up um, questions with you um, in the chat um, during some of the other sessions if they need to. But I think you did answer okay. the, the question we had. Thank you. Okay.